Human Nature. That was performed by Michael Jackson. No kidding. Which yeah. song, Human Nature? The Michael Jackson one? Oh. Yeah, they wrote that song. Didn't well, Janet Jackson sing Human Nature? Too, human right? nature. Um, I did not realize that, but that's a wonderful song. They did not write Rhythm Nation. So, Veronica, you see you have multiple stories, right? And this is so lagged. Like, I can, you guys are breaking up just constantly. Just letting you know. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I've, I'm getting the same problem. Really? You, you are too, Sarah? Yeah. I mean, I, I restarted and the, like, extreme lag I had before has fixed itself but it's like it's the same thing that was happening you know over the last half hour where it's just like i can hear you but i'm having to put certain words together myself i see all right i don't know everything is everything is broken i mean i'll quit Dylan wrote. Back, but that's never the issue no i don't think it's a i don't think it's a local issue for any of us no. well we're all having the problem so yeah. it's something going on there all right. Do we, well, I mean, do we want Veronica to restart or is it worth it? She just did, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you did? Oh, sorry. I was doing the same thing. Um, yeah. All right. Oh. Well, we can just cross our fingers and hope it's not some spooky Halloween nonsense. <laughs> Halloween. Ooh, I got to take my kid out trick or treating. Veronica, do you feel like you can read headlines? Do you hear us enough to? Jump in like that. You said the first half of your sentence. Oh boy. Okay. Oh, I can tell when your lips stop moving. Can you, but you can't hear what we're saying. No, sometimes in the second half. <sighs> okay, that's weird. That's not workable. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Well, that's what I'm asking. Do you think you could do it? Sure, I'll do my best. Okay. All right. Sarah, are you ready? I am ready. All right. Well, let's give it a whirl. Here we go. Daily Tech News Show is powered by you. To find out more, head to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, October 30th, 2017 at DTNS headquarters in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline at the Beach, I'm Sarah Lane. And from sunny-ish San Francisco, I'm Veronica Belmont. <laughs> sunny-ish. I like that. Uh, there probably is some sun up there somewhere. But we've all been restored to our normal climates as the heat oh. has broken in California. And it's, uh, I think it's starting to get cold elsewhere, too. Producer Roger Chang is with us as well. Roger, how are you? I am good. Good. Are you cool? I am in actually nice, cool, overcasty weather out in Burbank. All right. Fantastic. Well, let's start with a few tech things you should know. Firefox will start requiring users to give permission in Firefox 58, that's a couple of versions from now, to use the Canvas element to perform cookie-less tracking. In other words, you'll have to approve a website before it can do this. The Canvas element can be used to draw an image on a hidden canvas, creating a fingerprint of a user's graphics card that is likely unique. So it can be used for legitimate purposes or for secret tracking purposes. And in a future version of Firefox, you'll have to say, no, it's OK. You're using it for a legitimate purpose, or it's OK to track me before it can be used at all. Is there a unique fingerprint that could be taken of somebody's graphics card that isn't just the serial number? It's a combination of, of signals. So it's the way the graphics okay. card and the oper operating system interact to draw the image, plus you know, the fonts being used. And they, they, they combine a whole bunch of data. Hmm. Got it. Well, Square just released the Square Register, which is a point of sale device that has separate screens for the buyer and seller, which is different than the swivel back and forth single screen that you see on sort of smaller merchants that Square has worked with up until now. The new screen is detachable for different countertops, supports tap to pay, has Ethernet and a five port USB hub. I don't know. I feel cool when they swing it towards me, but I guess it's not optimal. 
I always feel cool when they trust me to point it back towards me right? and like as though I could just delete the whole transaction. They wouldn't know, maybe. <laughs> The Houston Chronicles, Dwight Silverman describes several AT&T forum threads posted by people who claim AT&T canceled their iPhone X pre-orders. AT&T customers also complained of canceled orders during the launch of the iPhone 4 and 6. Still say an X, huh? To say 10. It's 10. Well, I mean, it's not wrong. No, I have been told, I have been told, no, 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 I don't know, man, because I have been told it's phone x and that's Apple's, stupid apple says it's 10 just say and that because that's not what he believes no indian right. startups have raised almost 10 billion dollars so far this year according to research firm traxon which is probably not pronounced traxon it's probably track x and or track 10 and that's a huge jump from 2016's 4.4 .4 billion dollars and 2015's record 7.9 billion dollars and it's also on fewer rounds of funding implying that not only is more money coming into the startup scene in india but it's coming more selectively they're not just throwing it around wantonly all right cool. here are some more top stories Microsoft has killed off Outlook.com Premium, which, if you weren't already a user, included an ad-free inbox, among other perks, and is merging it over to Office 365 Home and Personal Subscribers. A support document about the changes states, current subscribers can renew their subscriptions to continue receiving subscription benefits, <laughs> whatever that means. <laughs> Custom domain support is one of those benefits. So it sounds like if you're already a customer, you're not going to get left in the lurch, but in general, this is a feature that's being phased out. Yeah, that's that's the what I got out of it is as long as you continue renewing, we won't cut you off. We're not we're not sunlight, we're not sunsetting the domains. And that's really the difference here is most of the features it sounds like are going into Office 365. But if you signed up for Outlook.com premium with a domain, you know, your own work domain, that's something that isn't offered necessarily in Office 365 for consumers. It's offered on the enterprise level. Uh, so you'll be able to keep using Outlook Premium on your domain without having to upgrade to some big business level domain system that has more than you need uh, indefinitely. And I didn't see anywhere, uh, you know, a particular uh, number of people who would be affected by this change, but I have to assume that wasn't a huge, big uh, market for Microsoft, which is why they're funneling it into something else they think is more lucrative. Yeah, they, it probably just simplifies their product offering, which often that's yeah. something Microsoft needs to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll say. Nintendo sold 2.9 million Switch console units in Q2, bringing total sales up to 7.63 million. The company raised its forecast on Switch sales uh, for the year from 10 to 14 million, more than the Wii U sold in its five years. Year. If Nintendo announced revenue of two, uh, uh, sorry, 219.9 billion Japanese yen, beating expectations. A smartphone and IP related income increases uh, 426 percent to 17.9 billion yen. So, I mean, it's a good, it's good earnings for Nintendo. But the big story here is the Switch console uh, selling well, not only well but better than expected. I remember sales for the year at 10 million was considered to be an aggressive goal that they probably would reach. And now they're saying they might hit 14 million. And of course, the inevitable comparisons to the Wii U are sad, but true. Monday, YouTube rolled out a YouTube TV app for Android TV and Xbox One. Apps will roll out in the coming weeks for Apple TV, Roku, and smart TVs from Samsung, Sony, and LG. YouTube has no rollout plans for Amazon Fire TV devices. That's because YouTube and Amazon are in a big fight. Uh, if you remember, YouTube pulled videos from the Amazon Echo show. Now they're not going to bring YouTube TV to Amazon Fire TV. You can decide for yourself who you think that really hurts more. The TV-based apps for everybody else, though, will have a full grid programming guide. That's something you don't get on the mobile version. And it'll let users scroll through a transparent sidebar of channels while the video stays playing to try to emulate what happens on your phone where the video stays playing at the top while you scroll below it. It also supports voice search. Now, it, that'll be implemented differently mm. depending on the platform, but the fact that it's in there is pretty cool. I'm very you know, excited. When this I was is watching, what I've been waiting for. When I was watching gonna... the World Series game last night, uh, YouTube TV was being advertised heavily because I yeah, was watching I on network TV. And, um, you know, they, they, they talk a good game, but a lot of it is like, you're MLB 
official place where it's like, well, that's almost over. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I, it does sound a little weird when it's like game seven, your MLB official place. Uh, but <laughs> There will be another season, right? And That's and true. I think what yeah. they're really going for is a lot of people think, oh, if I cut the cord, I can't watch sports. And I think YouTube, Hulu, yeah. PlayStation View, they're all out there marketing whatever sports they can to try to bash through that perception and say, no, you you can get your sports. Maybe not every single piece of sports ever, but you can you can get the World Series. You can get the World Series on YouTube TV. Now, Veronica, you say you've been waiting for this. Is that because you're thinking of switching to YouTube TV? Yes, we have switched away from, uh, we did PlayStation View with our first, uh, our first foray into this world. Um, we weren't happy with that because of playback issues and just hated the scrubbing. Uh, didn't like the interface at all, so we switched over to the DirecTV uh, option. And we've not been happy with that either. And plus, we don't get certain things, uh, certain channels uh, and sports stuff that we wanted. So now uh, now that they're go there's going to be a YouTube TV app for Apple TV, which is what we use, it seems like the perfect combination of things and price point as well. Nikai Asia says, sources tell it that Japan's SoftBank Group plans to break off negotiations toward a merger between Sprint, which SoftBank owns, and T-Mobile US. You might be asking, why? Well, failure to come to terms on who would majority own such a combined entity, it turns out, which is not unusual for big companies in these sorts of situations. SoftBank is expected to approach T-Mobile owner Deutsche Telekom by as early as tomorrow, Tuesday, to propose ending the talks. SoftBank tried unsuccessfully to buy T-Mobile back in 2014. Now, I have to say, uh, I was happy that AT&T did not buy T-Mobile, and I turned out to be, I don't even want to say right, but that, that happiness was well-founded because T-Mobile has become a strong competitor. However, I have been less unhappy with the idea of T-Mobile and Sprint combining, not because I want to see fewer competitors, but that Sprint doesn't seem to be a strong competitor. What I wonder is if that's because everyone assumes they were going to merge, and so the momentum really hasn't got going behind them, which is kind of what happened to T-Mobile. T-Mobile was a weak competitor. They were fourth until the AT&T merger fell through, and then they said, well, you know what? and Legere probably said, F it, uh, let's, let's try something different. Let's be crazy. Let's try things nobody else will try. And they've moved from fourth to third. Do you guys think that it's possible that could happen to Sprint if this falls through? I mean, both SoftBank and Deutsche Telekom being so huge for it to be a dispute about, well, who owns majority stake, which means whoever owns majority stake has sort of, a, you know, can, can kind of say what goes that does seem to be a non-starter. You know, it's not even it's unique to either of those companies. That's just, why, why would you do that if mm. you were going to lose but control? But do, do you think Sprint can get enough momentum uh, if they're like, fine, nobody's going to buy us. We do. We have a big corporate daddy in SoftBank. Let's try to make it on our own. Do you, do you think maybe that could work? <sighs> I mean, I, I've never been a Sprint customer. Uh, I know people who are. Uh, I know they're you know, a bit of a distant third, at least in the US market. But um, yeah, I, at this point, it's like, well, what are your choices really? Maybe if they come at it from a different angle, a different kind of perspective that then the VF car carriers are kind of yeah. going for right now. I'm not sure what that would be. Maybe it's continuing to be like awesome plans or or no contracts or i'm not sure what the angle could be that would work for them but there's there's got to be some underserved market or a group that they could focus on but who knows maybe if they did that they would have done that already yeah i i think they were holding off on taking too many risks and i hope this will make them mm -hmm. take more <laughs> Weekend, uh, writer Thomas Bakedall noticed that Google places the cheese below the meat patty in its burger emoji. After a normal Twitter storm about the discovery, Google CEO Sundar Pichai wrote that they will drop everything else they are doing and address on Monday smiley face, if folks can agree on the correct way to do this. It seems LG, Samsung, Apple, and Microsoft all put the between bun ingredients in a different order. Only Microsoft does it in the traditional lettuce, tomato, cheese, patty order. Breaking I, news. I don't know Face, if that's Facebook, traditional. Facebook also puts it in the traditional order. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
Okay. Um, I I think this is this is troubling, but not quite as troubling as the the beer emoji uh, that Google has put out into the world. Uh, Roger, I'm not sure if we can bring beer up onto the screen for the for the video viewers. Um, I think it's just a, especially confusing because most of the beer emoji, Apple does it pretty normally. All the other folks do it pretty normally. Uh, but beer in Google's world has foam on a cup where there is no beer at the top of the mug. Uh, so if you look closely, you'll see the beer is only about halfway up the top of the mug, and then there's foam. And I'm not sure if Google realizes that's not how beer works. No, I, I, it's, it's a bad drawing. But that's, that blank space between the surface of the yellow beer is foam. Yes. No. That's just supposed to be foam in the glass clearly an empty space that is negative space in there that is not, saying not it's doing it right um, but if you look at samsung's samsung put some dots in there to make it clear otherwise samsung would have the same bubbles problem. yeah yeah i mean they they are clearly indicating that there are bubbles in the mm -hmm. cup in the foam for samsung's emoji version i, I google have, didn't even try i don't know how did this get through approvals like i, I just I don't understand everyone. why is this news only shrill what why is this news? Why did this become the top of Google news today? Why do people care so much? Because I know, I know there's at least one and probably more persons out there like, why are you talking about this in the show? I think, this it's, is not news. I think it speaks to an internal difference in, in you know, organizational differences, uh, priorities, core company values. Core I think values. this really speaks to the internal workings of a large technology organization and how things get done. I'm just saying. I, you know, I think you're being facetious, but I think you're also partly right. Like, I think I'm, maybe I'm not being facetious. I'm not. We don't know. We can't be sure. Who can tell? How can we know I'm being facetious? <laughs> I, I think, think it also, you know, it has at least something to do with the fact that emojis are now displayed at lots of different sizes. You know, at the beginning, it was like they're tiny little emojis. You know, they text to friends, and it's like you kind of get that it's a beer mug, but like the details, you can't see that unless you have like supervision. And now, uh, depending on the service that you're using, emojis <laughs> sometimes appear quite larger. And so yeah. someone's like, that, that beer mug is not right. Yeah. Or, or with the burger one, even more so. Like, wait a minute. You don't put the cheese down there. And then we can have a disagreement about how burgers should be constructed that isn't political, <laughs> isn't religious. It's, you know, it's just fun. I think there's a little bit of relief I here because it's, it's a typical geek argument, right? Like, how should this emoji really be constructed? Uh, and and we kind of need these from time to time. I, I, I don't want to run over time, but I basically want to point out on the Google beer, essentially what they did was repurpose a beaker from a science emoji, added a handle, and then added a foam top. There you go. See? Get some research like in I this. Say Indicative of the inner workings of the organization, recycling assets. This is this speaks to, to a larger problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the sampling so of emoji. Yeah, it's a real issue. Uh, it does it does show the design quirks of the various entities involved. For sure. Hey, folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines in each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to dailytechheadlines.com. It's available as a podcast and Amazon Echo Flash briefing, a Google Home uh, briefing thanks to the Anchor app. And you can get it in the Anchor app at anchor.fm. All right, Sarah, a uh, couple of stories today. One about a poor engineer whose daughter's YouTube video got him fired because it showed the iPhone 10, and the other about how iPhone sales are bouncing back in China. Yeah, it's sort of a smartphone extravaganza discussion today, which we felt like, hey, it's Monday. Let's let's do that. So let's start with a uh, some data from Canalyst, which estimates that iPhone sales in China grew 40% year over year. That's in uh, Q3, led by the iPhone 8. However, this is pretty significant because the previous six quarters all declined in iPhone sales in the country. Now, Apple, even with 40% ground gained, which sounds pretty good, is still fifth place. Huawei, Oppo, Vivo, and Xiaomi are all ahead of iPhone. And then the five account for 75% of all devices shipped, again, in China. So overall, Chinese smartphone shipments fell 5%, and that's significant as well. iPhone made some strides, but overall, of the big five, uh, there is less demand overall. 
So so yeah, we 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 saw a maturing of the Chinese market, right? Where where the uh, the demand Several is, is years leveling has out. Touted China. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, we we lost you there for a second. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, we're seeing this leveling out uh, and and this maturing of the Chinese market. And the fact of the matter is, that's not a bad thing for phones selling in China. It's a harder thing for companies because China is no longer the place where you can just jump in and say, ah, there's there's a hugely growing market. Anybody can jump in and, and take it over. That's now the so Indian market. That That's where you want to go with the Indian market. We heard about startups, uh, but on Friday, Canalyst estimated that worldwide smartphone sales in India grew 23% to 40 million. It is now the number two phone market after China. And I, you know, it, it may seem obvious to folks, but what this means is that smartphones are penetrating the world more so mm -hmm. now than ever. Uh, China, China is still the largest smartphone market, but it's going to be harder to make progress there it, without having it come at the expense of another competitor. I think, I think what that's it, actually under really cool too, because in in many ways this is showing that the not only is the technology spreading throughout underserved areas, but you know when as as devices become more readily available to developing nations or to poor regions within countries like China that have you know a very a huge variance between the haves and the have-nots, you know it only it can also really elevate the rest of the society and and bring information and education and accessibility to to places where they were not previously so hopefully this will help kind of balance the, the mar well it's i mean one very interesting thing about it is it kind of underscores how much of the chinese market has matured to the point where you are now saturated with smartphones that um you know you when you go into a mature market you cannot gain the same type of market share as if it were starting from kind of a, a much lower plateau and so the chinese market is mature which also means that customers and consumers are more sophisticated that means their taste will will, will, will maybe need, not markedly but enough from what they would have accepted maybe five or six years ago they they want different things and so it, it really kind of underscores that you really need to not only understand the market but also how to navigate uh, fewer people market. are getting their first phone more people exactly. are looking to improve from their last phone uh and that's you know that's when you start to pay attention to the fact that even though the china market declined by five percent huawei increased vivo increased xiaomi increased a bit uh, and apple increased it was oppo that decreased and that starts to be a very big problem that you say uh oh that is that the next blackberry is that the next nokia for china that's right and there probably won't be a lot of people who go back to having a non-smartphone device after this so it's just like you said they the market becomes more mature users figure out what they want they start looking into more alternatives they start maybe looking outside of the iphone market if it's not meeting their needs so it's just it's it's really it's a really interesting time and we have to also remember that this is still a small segment of a massive population. So there's still a lot of work to be done and there's still a lot of people <laughs> who can potentially be sold to. It's just a, you know, we're, we're starting to to really crack the crack that nut. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Apple's out there uh, trying to, you know, scrape up uh, a, ch a bigger Chinese market, Canalyst telling them good news, growing 40% year over year. But The Verge, has a story saying that a lot of retailers in China are discounting the iPhone 8. Now, it's hard to say if this is because they're not seeing sales or if if there's people waiting for the iPhone 10. Uh, but if that discount does mean that sales dropped off a cliff, that 40% jump could be a problem uh, unless the iPhone 10 were to fill in the gap. But the iPhone 10 has supply issues. Uh, so it's going to be harder for that to fill in the gap. How do I get that discount? Uh, you fly to China. I have to Easy fly enough. to China? Yeah. I mean, yeah. your discount has to be, yeah, your plane fare has to be less than 1,100 yen, right, Sarah? Right. Yeah, exactly. Should we talk about bringing your daughters to work? Yes, real quickly before uh, before we move along, and now that Sarah is back, uh, we we talked about the Chinese market, and we men I mentioned briefly about the poor Apple engineer. Well, maybe he's poor, maybe he's mm -hmm. not. Maybe he's just, you know, should have wised up, but... 
his daughter, Sarah, I mean, she showed things that to me seemed like what I saw on stage. Well, here's the thing. So the, the you know, the story is, is that uh, an Apple engineer, somebody who worked on the iPhone 10, uh, had his daughter come to the Apple campus in Cupertino. Um, she was playing around with the with the new iPhone, the iPhone 10, and 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 is, you know she's a teenager, kind of you know vlogger, very excited about the whole thing, showing off a, a few um, a few specs, nothing too crazy. Sort of sitting in the Apple cafe, uh, not really attempting to hide anything, which sort of leads you to believe that other people in the same area were doing the same thing. There's a bunch of people in there, and. Um, you know, the, the, the video got some traction and apparently her dad has since been fired from the company uh, for allowing her to do such a thing. Now, you know, I don't know how closely you guys watched it. I, I, I don't know. I kind of thought she was cute. But you also, you know, her dad appears in this video and there's no kind of like, keep it down, keep it down. Like, I don't think he thought he was doing anything wrong. No, it, it appears seemed, that he didn't. Yeah, he, he, he so, shows no sign kind of. Boring. Yeah, like he was like, I'm a cool dad, you know, I'm showing my daughter something that, you know, other people haven't seen yet, but not something that was like, we're going to get into a lot of trouble. It just didn't feel that way to me. Um, and so, and Tom, to your point, the fact that, you know, this phone isn't a secret, we've seen it, there's been hands-on reviews, there are units, review units out to various publications, is it this big a deal? But, you know, again, it's Apple who is a message controlling Nazi, yeah. To, well, so let's to speak. not call them. Let's not call them that in this day and age. Right now, that that word is a little harsher than okay, I think. I was thinking soup Nazi, but uh, message controlling yeah. um, stickler. How about that? Soup stickers. Uh, right. I um, think you know. If, it's, if I may, please. I don't know when you guys can hear me and when you can't, so <laughs> I'm trying to be careful. Um, I think that Apple probably makes very clear what their rules employees about uh, talking about and showing devices that have not yet been released in any kind of public forum outside of the campus or inside of the campus to people who are non-employees um, and for outside thing. Uh, I think they probably make that extremely clear. And I don't know if this guy is new or not. Do I think he should have lost his job? Do I think there were probably very clear rules and regulations about just this exact kind of situation? A hundred percent, they're probably very clear about this. Well, probably. I'm positive they are very clear about this. And so I think this is just a, it, it's just a sucky situation for this guy. He should have known better. I mean, it's Apple. We don't work there and we know better. And I think that it's it sucked and other work. It was an honest mistake. Maybe he'll work for a company that's a little less secretive about this kind of stuff, or maybe has, you know, a little more understanding. But it's Apple. That's how they roll. I mean, everybody knows that. It's it's It should have been really obvious. Yeah, and I, I don't think they're trying to say otherwise, are they? Well, I don't know who's trying to say anything. I mean, this the story is just kind of, it's sad, but I, I yeah. think it's probably makes it, it, I'm not shocked by it or or surprised by it or, you know, honestly, I don't even feel that bad for him because of it because, I mean, a lot of people want to work at Apple and, and know what their rules are. I think uh, there was something that I read and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, that he had been at the company for about four years. So not a lifer, but not yesterday either. Yeah. No spring chicken. Well, and, well, and go ahead, Sarah. Well, I was going to, I was going to round out this conversation on smartphone sales in India if we're ready to move on. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're, I think we're good. Uh, let us know what, what you think. Cause I, I, Veronica summed it up perfectly. I think guy knew the rules, rules were broken, mm, but I don't think he really, I mean, granted blogs are, are really good at nitpicking and finding details and say, Ooh, this is a, a way we, uh, the gestures that we haven't seen before. I don't think he felt that he was doing anything horrible there. No, I, I, I definitely got the sense that it was just sort of a fun-loving thing that was ill-advised. Yeah. Hey, yeah, not saying it was malicious to any stretch of the imagination. Thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com and at facebook.com slash groups slash dailytechnewsshow. Let's check in with Chris Christensen at The Amateur Traveler. This is Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler with another Tech in Travel Minute. 
If, like me, you happen to be a plane fan, a fan of air travel, or a fan of air travel technology, then you might be interested to know that, one, United Airlines is going to have their last flight of a 747 this month. Now, 747s are still being made, but United is going to stop using them. They're switching to newer aircraft, also from Boeing. But one of the things they're doing, which is interesting, if you happen to be a United Mileage Plus member, is they're going to be auctioning off hardware from Boeing 747s to Mileage Plus members. You can buy them with your miles. So if you're looking for a triple passenger seats to replicate your coach experience at home, you can get those or a two by two United Airlines livery panel. You can even bid on getting a rudder trim indicator, an airspeed indicator. So if you're a airplane geek and you've got some extra United miles, you might go check that out. This might be your chance to get a piece of a 747. I'm Chris Christensen from Amateur Traveler. Ooh, maybe I can get those coach seats they bumped me into and didn't refund me for the fare change that one time. Oh, dear. Yes, please do. (laughs) All right, let's get to our messages of the day. Sarah, what do we got? All right, we've got a note from um, a a, a reader, uh, or a listener rather, who wrote in and said, I just wanted to give my take on the tech that I noticed when I was visiting family in India recently. So while I was there, I noticed how big ride hailing services had become in the last five years. Ola totally rules there. We used it many times with great service. Also, didn't see any Carbon or Micromax, those are mobile phone manufacturers, but I did see BBK's Oppo and Vivo stores along with Samsung stores. Most of the people I interacted with had a 5.5 inch on the diagonal or larger screens, people like the larger screens, and they were either Samsung or Oppo with one being Redmi. Also saw that the Pune airport runs Ubuntu 12.04 for the flight details monitors as they had to be rebooted while I was waiting for my plane. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't post them anymore because I don't mean to shame places, but I definitely take pictures of crashed screens. I do too, just, always. Yeah, yeah, it's just fun for me. It's um, more of like, it's not the fact that it happens, it's the fact that sometimes it takes so long for someone to realize that it's happened. That's yeah, it's just... just I, I also find it interesting that, uh, you know, this, this is using XP or that one's using Mac OS or that one's using Ubuntu, just like, okay. uh, just like Mohan here. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mohan, for writing into feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. And thank you, Veronica Belmont, for persisting through the technology issues today. Uh, what do you got going on to tell folks about? Oh, what's going on these days? Um, hmm, um, speaking of giant emoji, uh, we just launched a new feature at Grobot that allows you to view all of your kudos on big screens around the office. And I got to work on that project and I'm super excited about it. So you can see all of your kudos. Just go to uh, grobot.io, install the bot, and uh, ping me on intercom if you need some help. I Now I understand why you're so into that hamburger emoji. I'm so passionate about <laughs> how they appear. <laughs> yeah, right. absolutely. Uh, we'll check it out at grob- grobot.io. Or? Yes. Grobot.io. .io. Okay, there we <laughs> go. Uh, hey, folks, uh, thank you for keeping us afloat at Patreon. Uh, we had a big milestone push last month, and we know that a lot of you upped your pledges and changed amounts, and then maybe some of you realized, uh-oh, you know, things changed and I can't support, and we understand that. But what we do try from month to month to make sure is that we have at least one patron, if not more, more than last month. Now, we were well ahead of that last time we spoke, As of right now, with just two days left, we are two patrons more than last month. So if you've been putting off supporting us, or if you're new to the show, patreon.com slash DTNS, help give us a little padding there. And if you're those two people, don't quit because we need you to stick around. Uh, (laughs) Patreon.com slash DTNS. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We are live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC at alphageekradio.com and diamondclub.tv. Join us live if you can or after the fact. All good. Our website is dailytechnewsshow.com. We'll be back tomorrow with an all-new show. Join us then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com.
Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> we made it. <laughs> we did. I am so sorry. I did like everybody froze mid show and I just had to restart and then it was okay. But even before that, it was tough. There was just some hangout weirdness today. Yeah. Yeah. If it had it just was, been me, I would have been all worried. But if it was Veronica too, and we seem to have the same problem. So it's like, mm -hmm. well, the, the weirdest me. thing is that you guys all sounded fine to me, except Veronica had some bandwidth issue sounding stuff where like just syllables dropped here and there. Um, but, yeah, but I don't know. I felt like you guys never heard when I started talking. So like we would just, yeah, it was almost like there's other. noise cancellation going on, which I mean, I'm, no, I'm not saying that's what it is. It's what it sounded like to me. But Sarah never sounded bad. Roger never sounded bad coming back to me. So I don't know Which what Which is it weird because Sarah wasn't as bad as Veronica, but parts of your um, speech were dropping out too. But little, little bits, like all end you, parts. Of all you. of you were like dropping out. Yeah. I, d I mean, there were a couple of times where I was like, okay. A couple of times where I just didn't hear anything and I wasn't sure if it was my turn or... This is Please. this is not a brag. I have the most bandwidth because I've symmetrical, right? I wonder if Hangouts is for some reason today pushing a larger amount of bandwidth up and down. And so Sarah feels it a little less. I feel I don't feel it at all coming towards me, but Veronica maybe has a little smaller upload than everybody else and that's why I noticed a little bit from her, but you guys were getting it from me because I don't know. It it does well, seem to Tom, fit. You were fine for me. You were nothing. I noticed nothing at all. Right, and that's what I mean. You're like, right. it does feel like maybe it's a bandwidth related. There My seems computer to be is bandwidth. being slow. Yeah, it could be that too. It data feels slow right now, but it might be a DNS issue. Anyway, we probably shouldn't troubleshoot it and call attention to it right now because then. Our audience is so nice that they're going to want to try to troubleshoot it too. And the fact is, I'm not sure that there's much we can do about it at this point. Uh, titles then. Titles. Why is this news? Question mark is at the top. <laughs> Slow Tech News Day. Google's gull, gulls, beer, foam, floats in midair. Stay tuned. Uh, no cookies for you. Burger Gate. Sunny ish. Tom calls Veronica facetious. Um, Tom likes crash screens. How do I get that discount? <laughs> speed test can't even test my upload speed. It shows ping time, download, and it can't even do upload right now. Oh. That's, oh, dear. Okay, yeah, something's going on there. Yeah. So there are yeah. probably multiple things going on. Let me, uh, let me do my little speed test. Maybe. See if I see anything unusual. Sampling uh, emoji. Google is a wino. Big trouble in little... Oh, little trouble in big China. Apple supremacy. Oh no, no, what he said. Uh, Tom has a crash screen photo collection. Um, I mean, it's not huge. I don't want to brag. The crash screen belong in the Smithsonian, but whenever I see them when I'm traveling, I I do tend to grab a snap. I used to put them on Instagram, but then I got some people who are like, you know, hey, ever, it's not their fault, and I'm like, okay, fine. I'm I'm not trying to shame anybody. I always take pictures of jalopies. Jalopies, you say? Yeah, I've I've always wondered what extent you can drive a car and still have it drive, you know, minus the you know whatever condition the car's in. What do we What do we like for titles, y'all? Google's um, foam and Apple's foam phone. Foam. I mean, I I think the emoji is a good title. I think. Which which emoji? The uh, sampling emoji? No, the foam. The foam one. Oh, Google's foam and Apple's phone. Yeah. <sighs> Google wow. foam home. Foam home. <laughs> FOMO. Oh, fear of foaming out. <laughs> That'd be fofo, I guess. Now I'm hungry. I'm hungry too. Why do you have to say that? No, no, you have it in my head. Yeah, this is why I got a burger last time, guys. Come on, think about my heart. I love burgers. The problem is, I regret eating it an hour later. See, I regret nothing. Once it starts, I'm all in. 
No, I mean, like, I physically feel like I lethargic and slow. Mm. Like, I don't eat that much red meat. So anytime I eat it, I get my body has an adverse reaction. I know what you mean. It's the only red meat I ever eat. Like, I don't, I don't eat I'm steak or anything and otherwise. And but, I, boy, do I love a cheeseburger. All right. I'm going to, maybe if I drop out, all of your connections will be better. I doubt it, but I understand you have to go. So <laughs> I can't. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All no, right. I get Bye, it. Bye, guys. Thanks, Veronica. Bye, Veronica. I'm doing my little speed test myself, and it's just like nothing's out of the ordinary. Yeah. Um, all looks sometimes normal. it's just the web service. And I know it is everybody's impulse to want to fix everything. Mm -hmm. but I have learned over the decades, sometimes you just got to let it go and just, you know, if it comes back again tomorrow, then it's like, okay, I was wrong. There's something else going on, but. Well, or a lingering issue with, you know, the yeah. way that we're doing the show, but. But it's got all the signs of a transient issues. Yeah. Just a case of the Mondays. <laughs> Hangouts as a case of the Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe the whole thing about uh, a super AI developing out of the World Wide Web is true, and it's just mm. having an off day. Or maybe it doesn't want us to talk about that, and so it's corrupting our stream. Well, it tried to stop you from learning the true identity of Josh Lawrence. Right? See, oh, what did that tell you? Has way too much time on its hands. Or maybe <laughs> there is no Josh Lawrence. He is actually the super intelligent computer. See, Google just kicked me out of this Hangout. What? I mean, I'm back in. Yeah. But it, you, Roger froze mid-sentence. And I was like... Right now? No, no, no. It, it, it uh -huh. was like a minute ago. But then my, my Hangout just, Google just logged me out. And then I logged back in and that's fine. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's it. Web uh, 68358 says maybe Hangouts is just recovering from last night's game. Mm. It was up late awesome. watching the World Series. Hangouts could be awesome. East Coast right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Download speeds all amok. It's just sluggish. Like, uh... <laughs> Possible. I haven't really live tweeted any, not that I was really live tweeting, but I, I, I tweeted a lot during that game last night. Oh, you were tweeting good stuff. It was funny. It was um, fun. There were a lot I, of people. You know, I, I've really kind of fallen off the sort of live tweet reaction, you know, where you just tweet like, OMG, you know, because so many people like two days later would be like, what's wrong? You know, and I'm like, I'm just like leading people astray. It's weird. But, um, but I also don't like to hashtag the game because it's like, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, you know? You don't want to go like, too obvious but yeah I'm, I'm with you I, I couldn't help myself I was tweeting a lot last night Veronica says her ha her, her laptop is working perfectly sorry V oh it was, it's, it was it's very, like I feel I mean I had the same issues I think Veronica's because maybe we're a little bit worse but it's just like it just sucks you know it sucks in those situations where you're like I don't want this to be bad Do, 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 Ooh, there it is, Beatmaster. Thanks, Beastman. Beatmaster. Beatmaster. Uh, Beastmaster. That's Mark Singer. So I don't know I if remember. you're seeing what Beatmaster and I are talking about, Roger, but he says you can actually get into the control room now during a live stream, during a Hangouts on Air, which didn't used to be the case. Oh. I mean, he also says he has no ferrets. He's not a beast master. Were they no ferrets? ferrets. Yeah, I guess they were ferrets. Wow. You know, it's where they got the two ferrets as your um, your companions in uh, Diablo 3. Oh, is that right? That's from Beastmaster? They collect all the gold for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they attack, but they're not as powerful. They're not as strong as the other, other two. Hmm. I always used to crow or the ferrets, one of those. Yeah, I'm okay, so, be, so mm, Beatmaster, it says I'm offline. <laughs> I 
I don't know. We'll 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 talk offline. Carry on about ferrets. Carry on, my wayward son. Mm -hmm. Um, when I used to live in Oregon as a as a young lass, um, ferrets, uh, which depending on the state are either legal pets or illegal, and they were legal in Oregon. And we had um, some neighbors that had a ferret, <clears throat> and these were sort of like the days of wide leg jeans. <laughs> and uh, a ferret ran up my mom's pants. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, the neighbor's ferret. I don't remember his name. He was really cute. But yeah, it was a whole thing. I, once you I get up the guy to a certain kept point, a couple ferrets. You know, the wideness mm. tapers. becomes less so. Yeah. yeah. Less down. of a Sorry, ferret mom. issue as time goes on. Well, ferrets are legal in California. My cousin has two. I don't think they used to be, though. No. I think they were illegal back in like the late 70s, early 80s. They were because I, I remember the fact that there were ferret pets in Oregon being like, ooh, this is the thing we can do here. Yeah. It's along with uh backyard chickens. Well it depends on the city. My roommate Sandy kept wolf hybrids and ferrets. Oh, that what? sounds like a bad combination. Wolf they hybrids. They did not eat each other. Yeah. Wolf Samoyed hybrids. Oh, it's I see. Thing. Okay. So like wolf dog yeah. cross. Part dog, breed. part wolf. Oh, interesting. Um, about which very those dire wolf of her. So before yeah. her time. Um, well, you know. Bog. Bog. You know, whatever whatever works for your think, happy home. Yeah. He <laughs> <laughs> kept uh, wolf hybrids, ferrets, and me and our other roommate, Ray. <laughs> Just, how you know, was, read books. <laughs> how big was that hybrid? I mean, was it like the size of a German shepherd? Uh, yeah, a little bit bigger than a German Shepherd, actually. Like, not not as big as a Great Dane. Because wolf hybrids get pretty big. Like, almost the size of a wolf. Koi yes, dogs I'm are the one you need I to hear. with three of them. <laughs> oh, don't big. call your roommates that. No? Yes. Okay. It's a joke. It's a joke. Not funny. It's funny. Da, 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 da. No, but you were trying. You you see, this is what you do, Roger. You lure me in with a serious question, and then you change I the tenor on me. Make a joke about tenors. Uh, I don't remember him sounding that high last year. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the news today is so bad. Not if you um, go Wait. in a different direction. <laughs> not, not if you still, yeah. Not, not if, if you're an Astros fan. Analyst reports tell you what. No, it's just, just in general, you know, it's just. Well, okay. Uh, I, so I know domestically here in the U.S. we have a whole thing going on. Um, but Many things. Uh, and there's the Kevin Spacey stuff, obviously. There's that. Uh, well, okay. I'm, I'm like, okay, but what, let's, let's move outside the U.S., Inventor admits dismembering woman. Okay, yeah. that's not very good. Yeah, yeah, Danish. Um, In general, Myanmar not doing good. Kenyatta wins disputed Kenya rerun. Yes, Happy. and that's <laughs> depending. Yeah. There's the Catalonia thing. Spain calls for Catalan rebellion charges. That one's simmering down though. And Pujaman is now in Brussels looking for asylum. I think it's on simmer, but I don't know Pujimon. if it's. Uh, we'll see. Jack Reacher creator shares thriller secrets. Write exciting books. Buy my book. Rainbow paint job cheers up cobble. There you go. There, I found one. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> not Maybe easy. they need a rainbow grocery co-op. We have one of those nearby. Here? Yeah, in, in uh, over on the west side. On the everything's on the west side. Yeah. Telling you, Roger. You're talking about a co-op? Yeah, there's a rainbow grocery co-op. Um, there's a rainbow? Oh, I didn't realize it was Washington, rainbow. Washington, I think. Oh, I have to check that out. There is a there's a there's a cool co-op in Santa Monica, but it's I don't think it's affiliated with any other co-op. No, the rainbow here is uh, right near the 99 cent store that's at the split. The Washington Place and Washington Boulevard split. Yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, I'll have to check that out. Mm -hmm. I really miss rainbow. Rainbow's a good one. Such such good drugs. Now when I hear Rainbow, it makes me think of Rainbow, uh, the wife character in Blackish. Well, I don't watch that show. Her name is Rainbow. Hmm. And 
that's why I think of her. Oh, who doesn't like a they rainbow? Call her she had hippie parents. <laughs> oh crap! <laughs> I forgot to change the title. Or did I forget? Wait a minute. What happened here? What did I screw up? What is ha we really? There's, there's, there's a curse. There's a hex. Like I swear, I put the title. I like took the title out. You know what? You might have copied it, but not pasted. I had two windows of the blog post out open at the same time, so I posted them in one, but not the other. A gripe that is completely unrelated to this, but still uh, makes my life miserable every Sunday morning is so I'm in this football uh, NFL fantasy league. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm in with a couple of my buddies and then everyone else I don't know. And they're really mean. Um, it's a it's a hostile league. <laughs> and that's okay. Uh, it's, but, just tra it's a trash talking league. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It's just people are just, they get very upset about stuff that shouldn't matter because we're all supposed to be having fun. But okay. You know, that's how it goes. So, you know, you got to set your roster and move people and drop people and the whole thing. And ESPN's UI, just for fantasy, is so bad that half the time, it's no better on desktop than mobile. It's just, there's like a tiny little orange submit button, like way down past the fold that you have to remember to click, or like none of your changes will be saved. And just half the time, I just forget to do that. And then mm -hmm. there's writing, and everyone wants to throw me out of the league, and... <sighs> Don't really know why I told that story, just to say. No, it's that, that not hitting the button thing. Yeah, no, I totally it, get yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's you know, it's like I, I know what I have to do, but it's it's set up so badly that it's I'm set up to fail. There's one, there's an there's one like that somewhere. Where is it? That I always run into where I'm like, oh, I have to remember that it doesn't save it, even though you feel because it's one of those things where you press submit and then you have to press save. So when I press yeah, submit, see, my natural inclination is, okay, I'm done. Yeah. Nothing should be set up like that anymore. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, well, folks, thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for supporting us. And thank you uh, for not smoking. That too. <laughs> Unless, you know, you just can't quit, in which case we understand. We're not, gonna, we're not here to judge. We'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>